I got a note recently from April White at Trust Relations, a PR agency in Arizona, USA, saying that they're seeing a real need now to use affiliate links to get press coverage, particularly for consumer brands. Now, it's certainly something we're hearing more and more about. But this is a really interesting approach to getting coverage in a media world that is changing. I wanted to hear more about this. So obviously I got on April to have a quick chat about this. First of all, April, just before we, you tell us a bit about what you do and where you are, just tell us a little bit, give us the TLDR about what you are thinking with affiliate links. Okay. So essentially what we have found is with consumer clients, if they are not in anywhere, you know, on an affiliate network, including at least Amazon, right? If it's skim links, great. If it's share a sell, even better. But if they're not on one of those, it is like pulling teeth times 10 to try to get them press because every other brand that's being pitched to those journalists is offering a kickback. And this is now the way in lieu of ad dollars that a lot of these publications are making their money. So we're talking about every company really that is a consumer brand needs to have a system whereby they provide a link to journalists, to influencers, to whoever, yes. that they can place on their website or on their, their feed that people click. Yes. And if they click and buy something, that person gets some money from it, right? Yes, yes. And what we found is that including that information in the pitch is pretty important as well. So sometimes even on the subject head, right? Like affiliate link opportunity and then XYZ, whatever it is. Um, so it's really, really important you know, to get their attention. It's something that they gravitate towards. And when we've had, you know, the few clients here and there that have, for whatever reason, refused to be on affiliate links or just, you know, don't want to be doing affiliate marketing, um, we've definitely noticed a big difference in the receptivity of the journalists that we're pitching. I mean, we've, we've you know, we've spoken about this and we've got very mixed feelings about it because we're both ex-journalists. Yes. And, you know, and it really is one of those things whereby part of you kind of goes, look, journalism shouldn't be anything to do with money or anything to do with that. But from the PR point of view today is if that's the reality, you've got to play that reality, isn't it? You have to. You have to. And there's just no way around it. I mean, ethics aside <laughs> or, yeah. or ideals yeah. aside, you know, I mean, uh, uh, but the, the reality really is that you have to be on those links and, and even doing things as, you know, creative as saying, hey, for this limited amount of time, we're going to go from this percentage offer to this as a way to spur journalists into covering your client within a certain time frame. So there are lots of, and then you have to change it on the back end, right? So it's, um, it, it does take some coordinating. If, if your team as a PR team isn't handling the affiliate marketing part of the business, then you have to coordinate closely with the affiliate marketing, you know, whoever manager that in house. Well, well, tell us a little bit about how you're one. doing that. Cause you, you know, I mean, tell people a bit about your agency and just tell us a bit about how yeah. you're actually managing this, this affiliate front. So we've actually decided, I, I know back, I told you back in the day, it used to be every PR firm started adding on social media as something yeah. else they were offering. We realized thing, that what social we were, media, the new, right, yeah. right, right. And now, and now I feel like the new thing for consumer brands, and this is not applicable necessarily for B two B, you know, tech, et cetera, clients. But if you have consumer clients or consumer division, you absolutely should start thinking about managing their affiliate programs because what can happen is they'll come to you, these prospects, and say, "Hey, we want this press," and you say, "Great, we need an affiliate marketing program set up." And they say, we don't know how to do it or, you know, so we either coach them through it as part of our services, or we actually will just take it on and say, we'll set it up for you. We'll manage it. We'll handle everything on the back end. And then we'll send you reports of, you know, the ROI of it. And so, so you're doing the whole thing for them we, because yes. presumably most consumer brands are kind of like, well, apart from those who are already doing it are going to be like, well, what's an affiliate link? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, and so that, that's something that we've added as another service that we offer, uh, essentially just because it's necessary at this point. For, what is for it that clients. you really noticed that kind of brought this to a head for you that you kind of go, look, there is no other way now. I mean, were the kind of moments that you remember that you saw? So, so my, yeah. So my team, I know it, it was a few years ago and they started noticing that they weren't getting picked up anymore like they used to like they were getting the response from journalists that they used to and all of a sudden it clicked for one of our team members that oh 
The reason is all the other, you know, brands that got included in the story we weren't in had this. And so uh, suddenly her wheels got turning and she's like, oh my God, this is the new PR. And so it's kind of took off from there and it, and it's just become, I think it was less common a few years ago when she kind of picked up on it. Right. But then it, and this is our lifestyle division director. So she, at some point, you know, she, she's, she's a smart cookie and she figured out, oh, 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 this is, you know, this is why this isn't working. And as soon as she switched over to using those links, the world opened up. Cause it's interesting. Cause you know, we've certainly seen that correlation between people paying for advertising in the past and then suddenly find mm-hmm. that they get far more coverage. But it's the mm-hmm. fact that it's got so direct. So are you finding that journalists are asking for it? Or is it almost a bit of an unwritten word, uh, unwritten it's rule? Almost whereby, an, it's, yeah. Yes, I think it's the latter. They're not, they, they don't come out and tell you they want that yeah. because probably that would make them feel icky. But yes. it's sort of a, an unspoken agreement that okay we have to do this and here it is so how are you catching it then because you don't you you don't obviously want to go in there and say look we'll give you this providing you give us that you don't want to be as blunt as that it's not quite that aggressive but it is hey affiliate network or affiliate marketing opportunity so you actually do say in the pitches not every time but depending on you know who the journalist is and the relationship and what you know they're looking for and all that but if you know that that's a priority for them I've even had, you know, cases where our pitches have included that in the subject heading, Mm. affiliate opportunity, colon. It's as direct as that. Subject line, yeah. I mean, I know, I know, you know, and you feel it, I feel it as well, that there's this element of like discomfort about this. And yet, oh yeah, it clearly is the reality of it now. And it's, you know, the media world has changed so much in even the time that we've been involved in the comms game. Yes. So if people are sitting there kind of going, oh, I can't do that which it sounds like some of the brands you're working with as well, but I mean, PR people as well. What would you say? I mean, you can keep trying, you know, (laughs) you can keep trying the old way, but I don't think you're going to see the results and then you're probably going to lose the client. So it's, it's really a necessity now. It's sort of, I mean, yes. Is it venturing into this sort of pay to play realm? Yes, is it potentially threatening the credibility of those publications and the media in general? Yes, but is there anything that we necessarily can do about it when this is the way of the world and how things have yeah. gone? I, I don't I don't think so. Well, particularly when newsrooms so. are struggling so much for budgets now, they just need every every dollar, every penny they can get, don't they? Are, yeah, are and we need this? and we need journalists to stay in the game, right? Otherwise, what happens if they fold, then we lose democracy essentially right so it's like i don't know i mean i mean this is actually a bigger topic and one that i'm very yeah, passionate about and have, and have written about and all of that yeah. but like yeah it is something that i i'm very alarmed by but at the same time i don't think that you know taking a one-man stand on behalf of one brand is really going to change the system mm. at this point do you, do you find there's a difference between the kind of outlets that you're reaching out to because i mean you know you're your top-tier, well-funded publications, as few as them that there are now, are probably going to be less likely to respond to that than the kind of outlet which is struggling, I presume. I wish that were true, but it's Really? Not, not true. Not true at all. The biggest publications you can imagine are still looking for affiliate links. It's not the struggling ones. And you're not, and you're not having to change the way you pitch to these people when you're actually talking about this at all. It, it mm-hmm. really is as clear as that. It's fascinating. It's as clear as that. Yeah. I mean, it, again, it depends on the publication, the journalist, and the relationship, and all of that. Yeah. But once you understand that you're working with a journalist that values that, then absolutely you can you can go as hard as you know affiliate opportunity colon you know launching new lipstick. Mm-hmm. Like what? I mean, that's not a good subject heading, but fill in the blank with something more compelling than what I said. So, what about the content that you find that they're writing? Now, obviously, clients tend to always want a journalist to write a, an advert for them. They want really glowing, but at the same time, we also know that that kind of content can put readers off, can make it feel inauthentic. So yes. do, do you feel that there's a, ever any problem with that? Or do you find that most journalists are still pretty good at writing something that feels, well, hopefully is authentic? 
I think the journalists are still good at sort of uh, whitewashing any marketing flower, flowery, mm-hmm. you know, marketing ease, whatever you want to say that they, that you put into the pitches. But I still think it's really important at the end of the day. I mean, the reason I actually named my agency Trust Relations and, and coined that term is because I feel like nowadays, if you're not doing what you say, you can't mm-hmm. say what you do. So you have to have that lined up first. And all the authenticity has to be behind you because otherwise it's not going to be salient. So a lot of what we're doing is trying to work with brands and say, and and actually the outset of every campaign with every new client, we do a trust analysis and we go through all their messaging, kind of pick out anything that is um, maybe a little hollow or maybe a little like, (laughs) it doesn't have enough. It can be easily pulled apart. yeah. Yeah. Right. And so, okay, great. You want to make this claim. Well, how do we substantiate it? What data do we have? What proof points? What anecdotes? What examples? Yeah. What research? What blank, blank, blank. Right. So as long as they have that, um, we can take whatever they want to say about themselves and then make sure that it actually has some backbone so that when you pitch the journalists who are obviously the most critical audience that any brand is ever going to face, that they they can stand up to whatever yeah, you've here, got to be able to back you know, things up these days isn't it that's the thing i mean i think in the 100%. old days so when we're starting out people used to claim anything they can get away with it but now you're going to get caught out where do you 100%. think that, i mean we're, we're running out of time already but just very quickly where do you think this is going to go next do you think i mean do, do you see more involvement with affiliates or do you see more advertising any feeling on that I feel like this will get nothing but more rampant and that probably brands that are able to offer higher percentages are going to have better success. Yeah. So I'm afraid that's where it's going, you know, where it used to be, you know, I let's say 8%, for example, right? And that was fine. I'm afraid that brands are going to start competing with percentages Mm. to get into the press. And then, you know, as long as their margins are razor thin, but they get that credibility of the media coverage, then... Yeah, you're you gonna know, have maybe to, they, you're maybe gonna they, have they to might even take a hit on it. They might yeah. even take a hit on it, you know. But um, yeah, we've got to talk about this again because I'm really interested to see how this kind of thing develops. So you must come I know, on again. Um, I okay. just want to ask you very quickly about something totally different, though, because okay, let's hear I, I, got a, I got a message from someone over the past week saying that they love PR, but there are moments when campaigns don't seem to be working great or you're not quite getting the results that can feel really down. And I just thought it'd be really important to ask guests what they love about PR and what they do in those moments when things just don't seem to be working. Can you give us a very quick what you do? Yes. So uh, what I love about PR, I'll just answer that piece first because it's kind of a two-part question here. Yeah. Um, but I really feel like if brands aren't doing PR, they don't have any way to boost their credibility. If they're advertising, everyone knows that they pay for it. If they're doing anything on their own channels, Everyone knows they're saying whatever they want about themselves on their social media or their blogs. This is the only marketing channel where you can actually get that credibility boost by getting the, you know, kind of the third party credibility of the publication lent to you as a brand. And so that's what I, that's what I think is really important about this industry and it staying alive and it being, you know, robust and healthy and and growing. Um, In terms of what I do to kind of pick myself up, I think a lot of it comes back to knowing that and saying, okay, well, how are you ever going to help? Let's say, let's say your heart is in fighting Goliath and you want to take on all the David clients. Well, how are those Davids ever going to compete with Goliath? How are these new startups, these new ideas, these new inspirations, these new inventions, these new services, products, whatever, they, all of these things that these brilliant entrepreneurs are coming up with. And if we aren't there to help them, compete and get their voice out in the marketplace and PR is the easiest way for those competitors to do it right those those little scrappy guys who are trying to fight their way to the top and get funding and whatever else right and if we're not there to do it they're never gonna have a chance they're never gonna have a chance and then the world is run by monopolies and god help us all (laughs) <laughs> it's the passion. I love that. I love that. It's it's really going to that personal motivation. Very quickly, April, how can people get yes. in contact with you? Uh, April at trustrelations.agency is my email address. Or you can go to our website, which is trustrelations.agency. Superb. April, it's an absolute pleasure talking to you. I hope we'll talk to you very soon again. Likewise. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it.